So as I was walking just now, I, I was thinking of an issue of self-worth. You know, I come up with, kind of weirdly, these scenarios in my mind about what I would say to somebody and what they would say to me and then come up with an answer to that. Or, you know, sometimes I would, you know, give thought to what would happen, you know. And like I said, it's regarding self-worth and... You know, when thinking about issues of the past, it can be so easy to walk in rejection and to set yourself up for the enemy to come in and, you know, to speak, you know, death, to speak, you know, hurt and pain for you to walk in that way. And if it's issues of rejection, you know, the enemy wants you to think that nobody cares about you. And I think that's where a lot of you know, deep issues of depression come from. So, I was just thinking of issues in my life in which, you know, I, I had walked in rejection. You know, of course I didn't know Christ then. But now that I know Him, I have the chance of either entertaining those thoughts of rejection or dismissing them or learning to deal with them you know, in a spiritually healthy way to where you can actually redeem the thoughts. So if you get some bad thoughts coming in, which I'll, I'll give some examples. Uh, since I just finished walking, I'm going to head home. But I'm going to, you know, do this video while I'm, you know, driving and stuff. And once I get home, I, I'll finish. But I was just thinking of issues in my life in which I walked in rejection and and, you know, rejection, we're not born with it. You know, there's issues in our life from people that are hurt in which their own hurts can cause hurt for you. So I was uh, thinking about an issue when I was like 14 years old. Our family moved from, what was it? I think it was one part of Maryland, and so we couldn't get into an apartment right away, so we had to stay with our aunt, who was like in her 90s, and, you know, she was very gracious, letting, you know, family and people, you know, stay there, you know, I think really in those areas that she really did what God wanted her to, and... <clears throat> In her own way, she walked in love. But anyways, we, we stayed with her. And because she was, you know, in her 90s, she couldn't, you know, clean her place like I'm sure she wanted to. And so her place was caked with dust. Upstairs and, you know, the room I stayed in, it was more or less dusty. And since I have asthma, uh, I'm allergic to dust. And so it didn't help me staying in that place for a while. And so the asthma got to me and I had to end up going to the hospital because I, I couldn't breathe well. So I was in the hospital for like, I believe it was one or two weeks. And so I hardly had any visitors. I mean, my mother and my sister came to visit and there were some issues going on with between my mom and dad. My dad stayed in Maryland until eventually he came up. But so I was in that hospital room and of course I already dealt with rejection at fourteen years old because, you know, when I was a kid my sister didn't want me around and my dad never went to any of my things. So Maybe that is what really started rejection and issues of self-worth that I wasn't worth being around. And so, the enemy was really working in my mind at the time. And I didn't know God then. I mean, I had an apocalyptic of dream of God like later that year, I believe. And... But... I was dealing with issues of, you know, hurt and 
self-worth. And, and so I was just thinking while I was in the bed, you know, nobody cares about me. You know, nobody's coming here to see me. And of course, my mother and sister came after work to see me. But in my immature mind, I didn't understand that. So, so when they came to see me, I was already working in rejection. And so I, I was dealing with it the best I, I knew how. And that was to lash out. So I felt hurt and I wanted them to hurt. So I got up out of the bed and I locked myself into the bathroom and they were trying to get me to come out so they had to get a nurse and the nurse the nurse got me out or whatever and so I went down the hallway you know and I guess they were my mother and sister were trying to find out what was wrong and stuff like that and so they had a, a nurse to sit with me so I wouldn't do it again so that's one example of issues of rejection that I dealt with and of course that was my way of dealing with it and so through the years I you know I, I continuously had you know issues come up in which you know I reacted instead of responding of course like I said I know God then so I I did what I what I knew and so I recall after I knew God that I recall my friend he received a text from our friends saying for him to come over and I don't know if they knew I was with him and so I immediately thought that you know that they don't want me around and so my friend was like why don't you just come along I was like no because I wasn't invited and so he was like come on man and so I just denied it because you know if they didn't ask me I didn't want to go over and intrude so I ended up leaving the area that I was in and I went 20 miles back to where I lived and so you know that's an issue as well of rejection that I had dealt with and man I can I can easily walk in that and I can easily be taken off guard if my if I'm not thinking right and it's not something that I want to do I don't want to walk in rejection and so the best way that you can honestly deal with it is when it comes up is to just command that enemy to leave because these demons are working in order for you to think you know a negative way and they don't want you to turn to God they want you to feel bad because if you're feeling bad then you're not going to be effective for God so the best way to deal with rejection is to stop yourself, breathe, and ask God into the situation. Say, Lord, this is how I'm feeling. How do you want me to feel? Because in doing that, you're not giving the flesh any focus. You're then turning to God and letting Him, you know, help you to deal with it through the Spirit. And that's the way to break a pattern. So... It's, it's hard to do that because when we feel a potential rejecting circumstance, we want to react out of that. And so we, we really don't think about asking God into the situation. But I just say, if you're, you're dealing with issues of self-worth and rejection, you know, try that next time. Is that whenever you feel a potentially rejecting circumstance, just ask God in at that moment and help this and help him ask him to help you to see through his way of you know thinking listen to his voice and find out what he wants you to do and you know that would really help you to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh 
And so when you come up to, you know, rejecting circumstances in the future, you can think the good and not the bad. And, you know, that's the thing. It's understanding, you know, let's say you're sitting somewhere and somebody looks in your direction with a nasty look. Well, they may not be looking at you. They may be looking at somebody behind you. Or, you know, whatever the issue might be, there's always a reason for that. And so it's always thinking the good of somebody and not the bad. So I'm going to end it here, and I, I hope this video is you know, shed some light if you're dealing with issues of rejection yourself. So, I'm going to be sending more your way. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit subscribe. Uh, I usually put videos on, you know, a few times a week or once a week or whatever it is. So, you, if you hit subscribe, you'll be notified when I get a new video up. So, thanks for taking the time to watch.